I can't does it work. Hello, the thank you for joining us here at the dark side. Uh, this is Paul, and this is Eric. Uh, thank you for joining us. If this is your first time joining us, uh, there's going to be a link underneath your screen. Just fill out that out, so we get all your information. We have the flat rate shipping of nine ninety nine. If you are not in town, and if you are, you can always pick it up at the store. Eric, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you, Paul? Doing well. Excited to talk about some new comics? Yes, absolutely. And Godzilla. And yeah. Godzilla. Yes. We'll talk about him later. Yeah. So, let's get started. Yes. First up on our new releases this week is the Star Wars High Republic number two. Yeah. So, uh, this has been a really good series so far. Uh, Kevin Scott's been doing some great work. Um if you are someone who is interested about what came before, even before the prequels, uh, this is a great series. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it is a lot of fun. Yes. That's key for Star Wars. Definitely. Um, and I just, I, I, I always have preferred stories that focus on the Jedi. So this is a series that's really appealed to me because, uh, you know, we got the laser swords and that's the, the focus. <laughs> Uh, next to that, we've got Godzilla, which is a piggy bank, twenty-five bucks. It's awesome. Uh, but next to that is the first issue of Luna, written and illustrated by Maria Lovett. You have it. Two L's at the beginning there, so I don't know how to pronounce it. She is a Spanish artist, um, most popular in America for teaming up with Brian Azzarello for the Faithless series which was a big hit uh, over the past year. Uh, this, uh, if you're not familiar with her work, her artwork is very nice, re really nice illustrations, and she le leans towards the erotic. So this is definitely a mature book, but not too mature. What, what kind of story is it? Uh, late 60s, a okay. uh, girl gets caught up with uh, a band of hippies in the desert taking psychedelics and at the very end of this first issue there's uh some blood mm. uh there's definitely some sort of supernatural like blood cult thing going on love it uh and just like her illustrations just flow on the page so it's really beautiful to look at it's good yes i'm looking forward to it to the rest of them yeah i hope it continues to be good all right next up or did you have something, well, Rose? If she's from Spain and she's the double L, generally it's a J sound. So Jub it? Jub Possibly. I? Yes. Let's ask her. It's Castellano. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is the sentence long name of this title? They fell from the sky. They fell from the sky. Um. I enjoyed it. it. The way I sort of pit, pitched my view of it to Paul earlier was Stranger Things, but with Star Trek instead of D&D. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think it's a little more mature. than Definitely. It. Like, kids kind of go through some stuff, or the main kid. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I related to him. Yeah. I I found it a bit uncomfortable. I found moments of it uncomfortable because of yeah, how relatable it's it was. It's a like. nerdy kid getting bullied. Yeah. It's in a small town, and it's it's unpleasant, but it's relatable. But overall, it's a fun book. Yeah, I, I think people will really like this one. Um, it's like a good, interesting sci-fi story. Yeah. That's the first up. issue, right? Issue yes. number one. Uh, next up, right down here, Man Bat issue number one. I really liked it. It's a five-issue miniseries that takes place before the events of Justice League Dark, the current run. As well as uh, the Dark Knight's Metal series. Yeah, so not, so not Death Metal, Metal. Yeah, so the, the first Metal series. And it really feels like it's set up to be like his redemption story. Definitely. Um, yeah, I, I thought the first issue was good. Um, this seems to be like a series uh, where they're going to use Man Bat as a metaphor for addiction. Yes, definitely. So I think that's going to go some interesting places. Uh, and. Um, it's like it gets complicated because you definitely, I definitely felt for for Kirk Langstrom, mm -hmm. but I also felt disappointed in him at times. Yeah, 
So, you know, it's definitely like there's a scene with Batman and Batman's like, you're doing this to yourself sort of thing. And it's like, we're trying to help you. It's it's definitely a metaphor for addiction. Yeah. But it's very good. And that's the true Batman, too. It's like he always. Yeah, he wants to help. He did try to help. Yeah. You know, it's not always just like giving people concussions. Yes. (laughs) This is going to hurt you more than it hurts me. Yeah, and that's that's why like I've always I have a hard time with how Batman is written a lot of the time because I do think that what Rose described is at the core of the character, but I think a lot of people forget that. Like Christopher Nolan. Yes, <laughs> a, a lot of people just want him to be violent, not mm-hmm. not a particular. There aren't a lot of writers who care about the more humane aspects of the characters, and I I think that when I can like Batman is when when they do that. So I th- I enjoyed the Batman of this story more than I do most Batman. Next door to that, if you can see it, is a new book from Dark Horse Comics, and the author Matt Kind, Kinded, there's a T at the end, Kinded, uh, Fear Case. Uh, this is about the Secret Service's oldest uh, ongoing case about a mystery box that causes havoc and mayhem wherever it goes. And it's really good. Uh, I was talking to somebody about it earlier, and they they kind of said it felt like the movie Seven, which is fair, but this has more like supernatural aspects to it. The artwork is really good. It's all pastels and charcoal. So that's a nice change from regular illustrations. But yeah, it's, it's definitely going somewhere, and I'm excited. I want you to know that when you said Havoc and Mayhem, it took all my willpower to not make a very bad comic book joke. Uh, it's violent and bloody and good. Oh, I'd like to get a copy of the man that. Yes. Excellent. You said Dalton wanted it? Yeah. We do have more if anyone else needs a man back. Well, Dalton, I hope you enjoy it. It was a good issue. Next door, we've got Spectre Inspectors. Yes. Uh, I loved this issue. This was very fun. It was about... I'm not sure... uh, I'm not quite sure if they were uh, late, late teenage, early college age. They were... The three of them were... Either their senior year or just out of college, and okay. then there was like the little brother, fifteen year old. Mm-hmm. So it was it was younger people uh, investigating ghosts, doing doing like one of those reality TV shows, but a, but a web show. Yeah, doing and uh, some stuff happens. It's fun. Um, one of them may or may not be possessed. Yeah, is that Boombox? It yes. is Boombox. So it is generally kid friendly. I would say teen. Yeah, like middle school. I would agree with that. Um, I loved it. I think this was my favorite non-Marvel comic that I read this week, or my 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 favorite non-Marvel, non-DC comic yeah. that I read this week. Yeah, I really, I, I, I very much enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a great time. Uh, then, ooh, possibly my favorite of the week. Rose nodding her head. <laughs> uh, Maniac of New York. It's, okay, well, first off, the art is done by friend of the store, Andre Moody. Uh, he's semi-local. He, he lives here some time of the year. He comes yeah, in the store and buys stuff. He's from Italy. Yeah. He moved here to the States anyway. Yeah. You've seen yeah. his work in other stuff. Uh, he worked with George Romero and Empire of the Dead. Uh, he did the Vlad Marvel. Dracul. Uh, did the Vlad Dracul. Scout, right? Yep. Uh, does a few things for Image. Um, one of those is getting the TV show. What is it? I remember. I'm just going to sit here until I remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. It's So the setup for this book is basically uh, Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, but taken seriously from a creative standpoint. <laughs> it's like there's a division, like a FBI division, and then like a police division who are like team up, uh, like a really sad task force because they aren't getting the funding but yeah there's a maniac running around new york slaughtering people and like it's like an event like they have events like it's been going on for like four years 
and there's a calendar mapped out of like where all the, the attacks have happened. Yeah, yesterday when Paul and I were uh, were putting all the comics together for our subscribers, we looked at the cover and collectively agreed that this was not a book for me. Absolutely not. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad Paul Paul's been yes. enjoying it. Uh, I hope I hope any of you that read it love it. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> if you like Jason Voorhees, read this book. <laughs> Port of Earth. Port of Earth. That's the one. I knew there was a P in there. Port of Earth. Port of Earth being made by Amazon. I'm excited for that. On to the future states. First up, again, we're not pulling all the future states simply because we're not reading all of them. Um, but these are the ones that we have very much enjoyed. Yes. So starting off with Wonder Woman. Continued to be a great story. Yeah. Uh, I, I had some reservations about the character. I didn't get as strong a sense as Paul did from the first one. But after reading this one, I can definitively say that Yara Floor is great. I yes. love the character. Uh, and I love the world building that Joelle Jones does in this issue. And the art that she does. Yeah, it's so pretty. Yes. It's, uh, uh, and uh, this character, and Joelle Jones, is getting Wonder Girl as an ongoing series starting in May. Yes, and also... I think supposedly a CW show. Right. But yeah, this 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 is the second and final issue of the Feature State Wonder Woman. Uh, and it's probably my favorite out of all of the Feature States. And that's next door to Swamp Thing, and I Swamp Thing is my favorite DC character. So Swamp Thing, issue number two, very good. Yeah. Very, I, very good. I liked Swamp Thing a little more than Wonder Woman, um, but I thought they were both excellent, and I th I think genuinely the only different or the only reason I like Swamp Thing more is because Swamp Thing, like like with Paul, is one of my favorite characters. Like I think they were close enough that you know the fact that I like Swamp Thing more edged it out. Wonder Woman is a lot more fun, definitely. And like the second issue of Swamp Thing definitely hits that uh, constant Swamp Thing philosophical sort of points. Uh, any good Swamp Thing has that. It's probably the most like thought heavy of the future state yeah, books. Definitely. Absolutely. All right. Moving on to the King in Black. Uh, this first one we got here is Venom number 32, is it? 33, I thought. 33, okay. Uh, only two more issues of Venom from uh, Donny Cates, uh, culminating issue number 200. Um He's got a lot more issues to go then. Yes. Yes. The legacy number of 200. But that's, I have to say, that's like one of the tropes in comics I wish they would chill out with. I, I, I think it's cool having the big issue numbers, but it gets really confusing really fast. Well, as long as they have both numbers on there, I think it's fine. Well, yeah, that I have no issue with, but uh, they, they don't always. Yep. But yes, Venom number 33. Very good. Continuing the story. Uh, I mean, if you've been reading it, you know what's coming up. It's awesome. No spoilers. Yeah, we don't we don't spoil here. Uh, next to that is the Marauders. Yes, which was tons of fun. I love this issue so much. Um, it was weird seeing like Magneto and Beast in here solely because I'm used to Marauders as a more you know, more Kitty Pride, Bishop, those character uh, centers. Yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it matters that much. <laughs> but um, no, for her, she, she chose to be called Kate Pride. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyways, she's not a kid anymore. Anyways, uh, it was cool seeing Magneto in the book, and I definitely felt that uh, the way Magneto acted in this book was the most important part. Yeah. But I loved it as a whole. It was a cool story about um, Kate choosing, uh, you know, rescuing people at any cost over necessarily the main objective of the mission, and I, I enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, and this was a one-shot. Yes. As many of the King and Blacks are. Uh, I, I, that's, that's one of the tropes I wish we got away. Num numbering one-shots is number one. Yeah, uh, so this is separate from the main um, Marauder series. You can, in my opinion, read it pretty well without having read the main series. Yeah. It'll uh, probably be in, like, tied into like, the train. But... And I would also say that if you're reading Marauders and aren't interested in King and Black, 
you, you don't, don't need to read this, but you should. It's very, very good. And next to that, more King in Black, Gwen versus Carnage number two. Uh, if you read the first one, you know who Carnage is. Uh, I won't spoil it, but it's uh, well, it's a fairly surprising Carnage. It was good. It was fun. I had trouble with the first issue because there was like way too much like I don't know teen speak. I'm, maybe I'm getting old, but Spider Gwen was just so so teen. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Um, it was exhausting, <laughs> but the story was good. The art was very good. Yeah, but the dialogue. Was I'm just happy that they've been. I'm just happy that they've been doing more with uh, Sean and McGuire's work in Marvel. I think she's been writing some good stuff. Um, I still need to read her Amazing Nightcrawler from Age of X Men. Yes. Do you have any of the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic? Anthony would like some. Can I get it? If you guys still want one, we still have a few left. Um, number two. The number, number one is sold two. out. Number one is sold out. Uh, Including it's gone to the third printing okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, we went through, I think we only ordered five of the second printing, uh, but those are the same day. Yep. Actually, no, I think I ordered 10. Of the second printing? Yeah. Or did you order any of the third printing? Not yet. It hasn't been a thing. Okay. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, last of the King in Black for us today. There was one or two more that we didn't get around re reading, including this is the Valkyries, right? Turn yeah. Uh, but the Black Knight, again, one shot. I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, it was lots of fun. Yeah, I, I thought it was great. Um, I didn't care completely for some of the ways uh, Dane Whitman's mental health was handled in the context of the storytelling. But I did really enjoy the, the story overall. Um, I think it got good action, good character moments, and it is also very funny. Yes. Uh, you know, Cy Spurrier is very good at being funny. Uh, Cy Spurrier also writing the upcoming Way of X series. Um, and I just, I thought this was a blast. I love Black Knight uh, from my time reading Captain Britain and MI13, and I thought that uh, this was a different take on Dane Whitman, but I, I still felt that it was a, a good take in the character. Yeah. Uh, starting off the issue, I wasn't really feeling it because it has, it starts with narration in like ye old Englishy scroll and like, yeah, it's, it, it's it, like, I would find that a bit tedious, but like, once like I got into the story, like it made more sense. And I really like it. And There's a reason for it. Yeah. It's, it's, Fun. Lots of fun. On to more fun. Let's hit some back issues. Back issues. Back issues. We need to graph for that. Like, uh, I like it. Oh, uh, I jingle. It. Trust me. Trust me. I agree. Uh, we're going to start off with some completed story arcs and some mini series. Uh, series is a word. It should be series. Uh, top left, we've got Gambit 1 through 4 in his debut mini series. All four issues for 22 bucks. It's some really good stuff. It's Howard Mackey, and it's a lot of fun. Next order to that, I, I believe we've sold a, a set of this before on the show The Electra Saga, written by Frank Miller, covered by Frank Miller, art by Klaus Johnson. Issues 1 through 4 for 30 bucks. Good stuff. Next to that, X Men and Alpha Flight. That is a two issue mini series. Yeah, it's both a, issues there for eight bucks. It's a great series. Um, it it's a very good primer for both uh, Claremont's X Men at that time and Alpha Flight. If you're not as familiar with them, plus it has Loki, and I think everyone loves Loki. And everyone does love Loki. That's how they voted for him since Tom. <laughs> That's because nobody had we couldn't fit in people's houses on the film. Oh, Hillston looks greasy. Yeah. But that's on purpose, I think. Loki's yeah. 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 Loki's a charismatic slime ball, but he's still a slime ball. Uh, okay. Um, I hope Ruben is watching. Because we got three complete venom mini series. 
Summon so someone bought them before uh, Ruben does. Right, we've got Fuel and Fire, with three issue series for 10 bucks from 1993. Is that a shiny cover? That is a shiny cover with the Punisher. The Chromium Age. The Chromium Age of Frank Castle. Yes. Uh, next to that, we've got The Mace, which is also a three part series from 1994. And then we've got another three part series from 1994 called Madness, The Madness. All of those are $10 each for those three issues. Back down to the bottom there, we've got three issues Hawk World 1, 2, and 3. Eric, you're a fan of Hawk World, aren't you? Uh, I'm a fan of the Hawkman mythos, yeah, and this is, this this is a good, good chapter, chapter in it. Uh, and I hope people really enjoy it. Uh, Dalton would like to get all three of the Venom sets. Alright. You snooze, you lose, Ruben. Poor Ruben. I love the Chromium covers, yes. Also, I love me some Venom. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably my favorite Chromium cover. Like, it's yeah. so dazzling. Dalton, like... what did you think of the Tom Hardy movie? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> uh, next to that, this is, I think, the oldest, maybe the oldest thing we've got up this week. It's issues one through five of Sword of Sorcery from DC Comics. That is all five issues of that publication. Uh, they are in a bit of rough shape, which is why we've got all five listed for 40 bucks. That's the entire series. And it introduces Princess Amethyst, who uh, has recently showed up in Young Justice, who I, I think she's phenomenal when uh, when done well. Uh, God, I missed that Young Justice series already. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Dalton says that the Venom movie was okay. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it, but it was definitely okay. <laughs> yeah. Fish uh, tank scene. It was <laughs> Uh, the next to the Sword of Sorcery is Aeon Flux, issues one through four. This was a complete mini series through Dark Horse. Uh, after the animated series on MTV and before the movie. This was, I think, uh, in conjunction with the movie, but it came out before the movie. Yeah. That still creeps me out, though. This, the part of the, the intro for the, to the show with like, the, the bug crawls on the eyeball. Yeah. Like eyeball. Ooh, that's uncomfortable. Uh, Anthony would like to get the Batman Predator Series 1. So. We haven't got there yet. We haven't got there yet, but no, yes. He just he wants to make sure that he, he gets it. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, next to Aeon Flux, before the series that I already just sold, uh, <laughs> this was a three part. Uh, cross title series. So you've got part one in Superman, part two in The Adventures of Superman, and part three in Action Comics. All different writers, all different artists. It is the Dark Knight over Metropolis mini series. Batman comes to hang out in Metropolis. It's good times. I think they go on a picnic. <laughs> Do they? Video games down by the Yeah. Page. Yeah. Batman loves playing video games. We learned that from that one series. <laughs> we, we also learned that he hates uh, rock and roll. Yeah. Batman fortune is one. <laughs> uh, all three of those is five bucks for all, all three of them. And then Batman vs. Predator Cards 2, the second series. We got all four of those for ten bucks. And these will never be printed in trade paperback format because... Um, Marvel now owns the rights to Predator, correct? Correct. I mean, until, until Disney buys DC, right? Yeah, that's true. Soon. Hopefully not, but more likely than you think. It's hard to say. I mean, they are currently in a trade paperback, but those are out of prints. Yes. So if you can pick them up, pick them up. All right. Let's see what Eric's got over on his table. Oh, all right. We're starting off with something that to me is a heavy hitter. So in the 90s, everything about the X-Men changed. Uh, thanks to an artist by the name of Jim Lee. Who? Uh, you know, that, that one guy who clearly never went anywhere. He's not a publisher for a company or anything. Um, he's the guy that made everybody have problems. Yeah. Oh. 
I I love good Jim Lee art. I hate Jim Lee designs. Um, but anyways, so here we have X Men number one, the highest selling uh, comic of all time to this day, and we have all five covers. Uh, they connect to make one large image, everybody's favorite gimmick. Four of them connect, and then the fifth one is a fold-out. Oh, I did not know that, actually. So the one in the front there, that's the one that folds out. Yes, so you have a complete image. Um, Nine million copies in that. And I think that because there were five different covers, like, that was... That definitely helped. Yeah. That, that definitely helped the numbers up, but... Definitely. So be one of those people buying all of those covers. Yes, so we have all five covers for 45 bucks. Uh, next. So we have the fold out cover. We have. Why don't you uh, line them? Actually, give them here. We line them up over here. Okay. We're going we're gonna to do the entire. We're going to recreate this moment of 90s. Amazing stuff. This is a classic series. Um, and like I said, it did change uh, X Men forever because three issues into this particular series, Chris Claremont left X Men and went over to DC uh, due to creative differences. Because uh, this is the period of time where the X books were run by the artists almost entirely and the writers had no input. Well, the 90s was all about the artists. Yeah. I like it when it's a good so They were good artists. Yeah. Take that, 90s. I like it when there's a balance between writer and artist. You know, not one running the show, but working together. I could read a comic that has a great writer and a terrible artist. But yeah, that's, I'm, I'm all about writing. So I feel the same. It's tough for me. And I can imagine. Yeah. There's some good X stuff. Like, I think Fabian Nassiza, Fabian Nassiza was like the shining light of the X Men in this time. Mm -hmm. He was like one of the writers that was keeping things on track. And Age of Apocalypse is also something I love. But uh, speaking of X-Men, and uh, speaking of that same series, we have issues 2 through 10 uh, continuing on from that number 1 for 45 for the whole series. And if I recall correctly, we're doing something if you buy both. We are. If you want issues 1, all 5 of issue number 1, and then 2 through 10, we'll top, take 10 bucks off. We'll do 80, so 80 bucks for all 10 issues. Well, it'd be like 15, right? 14 issues? Yeah, yeah. Yes. all 14 issues. Yeah. Um, speaking of X-Men, speaking of the 90s, we have more. Um, this is 90 through 94 of the same series. Um, I'm not actually familiar with this story, but uh, we've got some great covers. We've got, let me take the sticker off here. We've got Galactus. Uh, you know, who doesn't love some Galactus once in a while? Uh, probably on the planets. That's probably true. Uh, we've got three of my favorite X characters. We've got uh, Kitty Pride, we've got Colossus, and we've got Maggie Crawler. Kitty Pride. Pride. Okay, but this is the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't using that name yet. Uh, <laughs> we've got Bishop. Looks, Looks like, like he's, he's back. back. Yeah. And probably maybe about to die forever. Yes, <laughs> because as we all know, in the X-Men comics, characters die permanently. Um, we've got some super villains hunting Mystique. Uh, I love Mystique. I hope you all love Mystique, too. Uh, and we have everyone's favorite X-Men character, Sunfire, who, whose uh, secondary mutation is leaving and then rejoining the X-Men every five minutes. <laughs> Uh, also, we found a number of the Big Hero 6, which also came out in this period of time. Oh, I didn't know that was an actual comic book. Yeah. yeah, that's what a lot of people were a little annoyed with the film because it like completely had nothing to do with the comic. Uh, Dalton made a very good decision. Oh, yeah? He's getting all those X-Men. All of the X-Men? Well, he's getting the issue 1 and then the 2 through 10. Thank you, Dalton. Goodness gracious, Dalton. 
Thank you, Dalton, for stopping me from making a financially ruinous decision. What are you talking about? It's a bargain. It is a bargain. Oh, it is, but it's still a lot of money. Uh, next up, we have three short runs of uh, Batman Shadow of the Bat, all part of the Nightfall event and the Night Quest storyline that is part of it. We have the God of Fear, which is issues 16 through 18 for seven dollars. We have the Tally Man for five bucks. It's 19 through 20. And then we have Bruce Wayne, uh, 21 through 23. Uh, yes, I like how the the story is just called Bruce Wayne. Yeah. For, for what about Bruce Wayne? Um, you know, this is Alan Grant who. For my money, it's probably one of the best people to write Batman. Uh, I don't love Batman most of the time, as I've said, but if it's an Alan Grant story, you might be able to convince me to check it out. Um, and also, these covers are just really good. And also, two of these stories are Brett Lovins, who is incidentally one of my favorite New Mutant artists, or New Mutants for this. Uh, Next up, we have X Factor 88, 89, and 90, which includes the first appearance of a character I wasn't familiar with, so Brian brought it up for random. Uh, 88 is his first appearance. Um, and I believe this is the Peter David run, so if you enjoy Peter David, uh, this is probably a good three issues to pick up. Uh, next up, we have Captain America 336, 337, and 338, also known as the Search for Steve Rogers. Uh, Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Presumably off to be no net. Yes. Uh, 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 this, 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 okay, that's no net right there on the top right. Yeah. You gotta be no net. Yeah, well, that's not Steve Rogers on that. No. Um, Where did Steve Rogers go? Canada. Let's suppose we'll have to read it and find out. Next up, we have uh, 2 through 10 of the Silver Surfer series from the 80s or 90s. You know, I knew that 10 minutes ago. <laughs> What's the price on the cover? Uh, 75 cents. Oh, 80s. Okay. In the 80s Silver Surfer series, uh, the first issue says that it is the return to Zen La and Shala Ball. Uh, I hope people uh, enjoyed this. I know everyone else in Silver Surfer. Zen La is where he is. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Silver Surfer is not the character I'm most familiar with. Yeah. Um, so I do have uh, like Keith, or Keith Pollard and Stan Lee graphic novel in my house that I gotta read. Mm -hmm. well, in order to save the planet, Zen La yes. and his girlfriend, Shalaba. Oh, that makes sense. That's why he became the, okay. the Silver Surfer. Yeah. The more you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, going from a series I know little about to a series I know a lot about, uh, we've got four. Uh, four issues of Excalibur. So this is the uh, end of the cross nine caper and the immediate aftermath. Um, also has Galactus, just like the uh, uh, X-Men 90. Um, I don't think you can go, you know, 10 issues without a Galactus appearance. That's probably true in the 80s and 90s. I don't think it's as true as today, but back in the day, absolutely. Um, you know, Excalibur is, for my money, one of my favorite comics of all time, and I think that this is a really good one. Uh, the cool thing about the cross time paper is you can you can even jump in on the final chapter, and I think it does a really good job of explaining itself. It's not as connected a story arc as a lot of stories, so it's a decent place to jump in. Is that is that Captain Britain with like the ten foot shoulder thing? Yes. So we got Captain Britain. We've got Rachel Saunders pretending to be Kitty Pride. Uh, <laughs> I will approach Kitty Pride. Uh, we've got Opal Lunar Saturnine, the Omniversal Majestic, Majestrix. Um, we've got Nightcrawler, Megan, and uh, Dr. A <laughs> yes? Superhero name, superhero name, Megan. And then we have Dr. Alistair Stewart, who is totally not a Doctor Who reference at all. Um, oh, is that that guy? The uh, the fake Doctor Who that they put in there? Or he's, he's a reference. Him and his sister, Brigadier Alison Stewart, are uh, references to the Brigadier Alistair Lethbridge Stewart from the classic Doctor Who. I that. Oh. Okay. Well, I appreciate they, they, you telling me that because I did not know that. Okay. Because I know that Marvel had like a goofy like like would be Doctor Who character at one point. That might be him though. 
there's a there's a there's a lot of characters. You look at my Sylvester McCoy. Okay. Uh, well, this uh, not this series particular, but Captain Britain stuff does have the special executive who also appeared in Doctor Who Marvel UK comics. Okay. Um, because Alan Moore created them. And uh, next up, we have Spider-Man uh, six to seven with uh, the Hobgoblin. So this is a two-part story. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All the way. You want to yeah. Put that up, up close to the camera. This is probably like the most McFarlane art to ever McFarlane. I know. He McFarlane the hell out of That sounds like a new game. Yeah. Do, do both covers. Yep. I want to do people. And this oh, one, the Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Who knew he was going to be there? And this one is Paul's favorite character. It's not below the dark, though. So it is not. It's not below the dark. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's up there. A two issue story arc written and drawn by McFarlane. Yes, he did all the interior. Yeah, well, so. yeah. So that's pretty exciting for those of us who didn't know that that existed. Some classic stuff. Until we found it. And I, I actually think McFarlane's Ghost Rider is pretty good. I haven't read it, so. Well, I, I, no, I, just, I meant like the, the art on the cover of the second issue. <laughs> uh, next up, and lastly, on the, for this rack, we have uh, one of my favorite miniseries, The Weird. Uh, can you adjust that? It's it's glaring on the uh, on the screen. Uh, I can't see it. How's that? Uh, that's better. So this is uh, Jim Starlin and Bernie Wrightson. Uh, it's sort of a a more science fiction-y series within the DC universe. It's, it's not as much a superhero story, although superheroes do show up. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I don't remember a lot of it. I did read it when I was younger, but um, it's, it's a great mini-series. Um, and it was an attempt to introduce a new character that they hoped would catch on, but unfortunately he didn't. But like, I will never not enjoy the combination of Jim Starlin and Bernie Rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rice and Hart. Yeah, the covers are, are stellar. Um, you know who also loves this? Who? It's Jamie Tracy, who would like that series. Good choice, Jamie Tracy. <laughs> I hope I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Bernie Wrightson. Uh, before we leave this uh, one, uh, in case you guys didn't catch those Shadow of Hats numbers, those are that is between those three miniseries, that is issues 16 through 23, a complete run for those numbers. Yeah, starts off with the Nightfall, Night Quest, and then continuing yes. the Night Quest. So if you're building your Nightfall, Night Quest, what's the third chapter? I don't remember. Night. It's, like night, it's like Night Return or something. Night's End? Yeah, Night's, yeah, night's, night's End. end. Yeah. So you're building that 200 issue collection. <laughs> it, feel, it certainly feels like it's 200 issues. It was like three years worth of stuff. Yeah, and it, was, and it wasn't just one Batman book either. It was like it was four all of them. them. <laughs> it was all of Gotham books. Hmm. All right, why don't we take a look at some more books? Okay. I, I would hope that people want that. All right, starting off in this collection, uh, there's a little holiday coming up in a few weeks on Valentine's Day, so we thought we'd get a little romantic. And so we've got Little Wedding, Superman, Lois Lane, or two Superman and Lois Yes. We also have The Wedding of Scott Summers and Jean Grey. Very good issue. Uh, say what you will about the marriage, but the... the <laughs> I mean, I, I personally am a fan of them as well. It's all about the wedding. Yes. That's not what happened after. I, right. Everything is easy after that. It's kind of great how they managed to make uh, a book about uh, the wedding of Cyclops and Phoenix still like fairly decently about Wolverine. That's classic, <laughs> classic X writing. <laughs> a special double sized issue, X Men 186, Life Death. It loves space. Yes! Uh, okay, so Life Death is like one of my favorite single issues of X Men. It's got Barry Windsor Smith art, and it's just. It's so good. Uh, and it's. So I most experienced Forge through later stuff, and I didn't care for the character. But after reading this issue, you know, I kind of got a greater appreciation for Forge. And this is a 
confrontation between Storm and Forge after he has mistakenly stolen her powers, right? Is that what this is? So the confrontation is part of the issue, but it, it's sort of a chronicle of their romance and how that doesn't go great. <laughs> Right. Next that, that, That's all the romance we have this week. Maybe we'll have some more next week. Uh, the love is not in the air this week. There's only so much romance. Well, we do have some Punisher. Amazing <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man number 202. Featuring a team up with Spider Man and the Punisher right there. Next to that, Son of Satan. Uh, issue number 24. It's Marvel Spotlight issue number 24, which was the last Son of Satan issue of the Marvel. Oh, they gave him his own series after this. Uh, it is in a little bit of rough shape. I think somebody really enjoyed reading this when they were younger. Should I see the cover? Okay. Right here on the spine, you can see that that's got some wear. But you know, if you need your son of Satan, you need this. Mm -hmm. And then, let's hit some more shiny covers. Yay! Satana! X-Men 2099, issue number one. Chromium Age, maybe. Maybe that shiny bird border. If I keep repeating Chromium Age on the show, eventually it will catch on. Yes. And then it will become an official nomenclature. You need to start hashtagging it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's how things catch on. Yeah. I had such high hopes for the 2099 series when it came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the Spider-Man 2099 was actually pretty yeah. good, but that was, that was pretty much it. It's pretty much Spider-Man and Doom. Yeah. I remember, again, being a Ghost Rider fan, being disappointed because he wasn't really Ghost Rider 2099, was like a computer virus mm -hmm. and not like a spirit event. I, I was also really disappointed by the recent 2099 event that they did. Yeah. They, took, they made some really weird choices that I don't Quite understand. Yeah. yeah. All right, we got some uh, one shots down here. We've got Batman and Green Arrow, The Poison of Tomorrow, written by Denny O'Neill. Yes, love me some Denny O'Neill. That's eight bucks for that. Who's the art? Um, Michael Netzer. Next to that, we've got. Mask of the Phantasm. Phantasm. The Phantasm. This is the movie adaptation. So, one of the best animated adaptations of Batman. Definitely. High up there. I, I really enjoyed when they had uh, her have a cameo in. Uh, the epilogue to Batman Beyond that was in Justice League Unlimited. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. When they had like old woman Phantasm yeah. being like. I can't, I can't kill Terry McGinnis' dad. I, I love that bit. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, next we've got, I believe we had a Batman Jeff Grand last week or the week before, but this one is Vendetta in Gotham. I mean, hey, it's perfect for Valentine's Day. Perfect you know, for Valentine's the, great, the greatest romance of all time, Batman and Best Shred. Who's the artist on there? Uh, it's a little fella named Frank Mignola. Oh! Hey! I was not, I was not making fun of his What What did he do? What did Mike Mignola do? Oh, he's done nothing. Oh, okay. Okay. They wanted to give him a shot. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work out. Unfortunately. That man kind of has uh, Hellboy's torso in that. Yeah, no, there was a... Who? One of the... Before Hellboy, there was... He did the art for... What was that? I think it was Legends of the Dark Knight or Shadow mm -hmm. of the Bat, and, like, people refer to it as, like, the first Hellboy book, but with Batman. Like, <laughs> the story is very... Hellboy, the art is very, what would become Hellboy's signature art. All right, next up, Wolverine, Ron of Terra. Reign of Terra. It's, is it pronounced Reign? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pun. Yeah, it's a pun because uh, Peter David infamously likes puns and works them at any cost. Uh, so it's it's Rain, which is, as Rose pointed out, Wolfsbane. Uh, Rain Sinclair, a character that I love. She's great. So I thought it was Ron when yeah. I was reading the comics before yeah. there was the internet or like that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And this, going back to Doctor Who, this sounds like a 1970s Doctor Who episode. Yes, it absolutely sounds like it should be a serial with like Peter Davison. Uh, serial with an S, not with a C. Uh, uh, art by Andy Cooper. We're going to ignore Eric's joke there. 
<laughs> oh, you always ignore my jokes. You're not very good at yes and. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> <laughs> I understood that reference. <laughs> next to that, we've got Giant Size Wolverine featuring an original story by David Latham. You most known for his series Stray Bullets. He's a great crime writer. I actually, weirdly enough, like owned this issue when I was a child, and not not like a teenager. Like I was probably seven when I got that issue, and knowing what I know now about that issue, I should not have had that issue when I was seven. Look at that hair, though. Yeah. Yeah. That is extreme. Yeah. This cover is just like has always stuck with me. Yeah. It's just so striking. And this also features reprints of X Men issues six and seven. So you get more than one look in there. Which, uh, like the 90s yeah. series? Okay. Yep, the ones that were just purchased. Yep. And lastly over here, my favorite, Tales of the Army of Darkness. Good movie. This is, uh, I think, five different short stories by different writers and different artists. So if you love you some Army of Darkness. Is that IDW? Because I thought they had the, the right. Uh, Dynamite has. Dynamite, yeah. Have you guys ever watched the TV show? Yes. I never watched it. It's so good. <laughs> don't I, even get me started. I don't want to. Don't, but I haven't. <laughs> yeah, okay. If you enjoy the absurdity of Army of Darkness, the show is like amped up like 10 times. It's brilliant. And I'm angry that it's over. <sighs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's a source. He's so emotional. This is going to be it, unless we need more of some ground stuff. Okay. We probably will. Oh. All right. Up here, we've got some of our more pricey books. Uh, Giant Size Man Thing. Oh, boy. Number five. That title. Just in time for Valentine's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it's, if you get romance. If you don't know what to get your partner, consider a, a giant size man thing. Uh, and being a giant size, there's multiple stories in there. Uh, one featuring Howard the Duck and Dracula. Like, in the same story? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's delightful. Duckula. Count Duckula? That shows great. A ducktacular, truly. Uh, and then we've got Swamp's Thing from the original run, number 22 and number 24. Those are in gorgeous condition. If you guys don't find them, they may go into my box. Because I need them. Uh, and 24 is the last issue of the original run of Swamp Thing. So, buy them. Please do. Buy, buy them so Paul doesn't have to. <laughs> uh, and then we've got some more Batman. This is issue number 300. So apparently it's a special 300 issue. Or an owls. No. Cardinal Owls doesn't <laughs> exist yet. <laughs> um, yeah, it was 2011 when the Cardinal Owls were created. Then we've got some DC special Earth Shattering Disasters. That one's going for 20 bucks. There was the DC DC special was an ongoing kind of anthology series. This one features Batman and Aquaman fighting natural disasters and whatnot. Was this a, like a charity book, or was this just... It is not. Weird. Because usually when they do those kind of issues, they're for charity, mm -hmm. but it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next to that, we've got Daredevil number 145. Fighting Wolverine. That is the owl. <laughs> you could have fooled me. Uh, if you watch the Daredevil series, uh, he was in it. Uh, Leland Owlsley. Yes. Uh, this is about 10 issues before Frank Miller joined Daredevil. So, you, yeah, it's a good era. We've got the 150th issue of The Avengers. This features an all new team of people you've seen before. Have we? You sure? Uh, yes. Who's that in Greek? The woman in green. Her? Yeah. That moon something. Here, can I? Yeah, that's Moon Dragon. The the daughter of Drax. Yeah. Yeah. Then because we like shiny things, we've got Dazzler number one. Yeah. Dazzler's like I think one of the most underrated X characters. 
Yeah, I think they need to give her like a good writer. That's that's what made me, go. yeah. That's what made me happy a couple of years ago with uh, with during the Secret Wars when uh, G Willow Wilson did A Force. We not only got Dazzler back, but we got Dazzler in like the '80s costume with the roller skates. It made me so happy. Well, I mean, you could really easily do like a modern day adaptation of it. Like they did it with Jem a couple years ago. It wasn't great. Yeah. But yeah, like an up and comer kind of thing, and discovers her powers and uses it to gain popularity. But then things happen, and then uh, there could be a Halloween section, and so she wears like this ridiculous outfit and the throwback. So it writes itself. It yeah. Does. So we, you, we usually do we usually do movie fan casting, but how about a fan like pick a writer who you would want to see tackle Dazzler? Mm. Well, we we can discuss that okay. later. Uh, Alan Moore. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Mm. Mm. I'd say Teeny Howard. Thor Fennis. <laughs> yep. Oh, I will fight you, Rose. <laughs> we're uh, we're saying that Garth Ennis should write Dazzler. No. Oh, speaking of Dazzler, I just found the first issue of Dazzler. Oh, we already yeah. have the first oh, issue up here. We have yeah. two copies. Someone buy both of them. Um, Garth mm-hmm. Ennis writing Dazzler. <laughs> I would do that. Yeah, read that. I would not. <laughs> I have yet to meet a Garth Ennis book that I li- uh, book that I liked. It's unfortunate. But anyway, let's visit Dracula. If he's not busy hanging out with Howard the Duck, we've got Dracula Lives Number One in the magazine format from the seventies. That's thirty-five bucks. It is a little rough along on the edges there. There's going to be some prickles on the back. This is an issue number one. That title's a spoiler for the ending, though, so that's fun. Well, he unlives, maybe. Yeah. Right. And then next to that, we have Dracula Lives, the annual, which is forty dollars. And you're asking why is that more? Because this is pristine. This is in gorgeous condition. Like the edges are great. The, and I don't even know if anybody's ever opened this book. It is gorgeous. What's well, the interior art look like? I don't know because nobody's ever opened it. We dare not. We dare not face the wrath of Count Dracula. All right. Next to that, we've got an All Star Comics number sixty-eight. Yep. And that features who? Who, Eric? The Justice Society of America, uh, one of my favorite teams, fighting the Psycho Pirate. Uh, and for those of you that did not know, because this reminded me. Uh, soon we're getting a Justice Society animated movie, which I'm really excited about. It's got, like, Matthew Mercer in it for some reason. And, and Rose's, like, interest in Matthew Go on. <laughs> um, uh, it's going to be cool. It's got, like, Snomicotic as Wonder Woman. It's got Matthew Mercer as Our Man. Uh, I don't remember who Matt Bomer is playing, but a really solid cast. Uh, and I think it's going to be a fun movie. It's set in World War II. What if Matt Bomber was playing a character from Doom Patrol? I would love that, but I know for a fact that that's not who he's playing. But I said, what if? Oh. We I don't w- speculate here. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would explode with excitement. They don't have, are they going to have Wildcat in it? I think so. Oh, I hate that character. <laughs> what? I love Wildcat. He's just a guy that touches people. And that's why I love I, I, I just hate Batman. Batman. I, I like he Batman. even like ties his little hood on. Like he's always got to just kind of I like, like boxing, okay? <laughs> All right. Lastly over here we have an issue of X Force. Uh that's gonna be X Force number two. I think that's the first appearance of Kane, isn't it? Or... Uh well it's the second appearance of Deadpool. Right. Yes. Oh why don't we have the first one? Um because we currently don't I mean, we get it from time to time. Yeah, that's yeah. fairly regularly in the case. We just don't have it now. Well, my joke backfired. Yeah, <laughs> as they often do. That's what oh, oh. 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 fire! <laughs> Probably. <laughs> this might very well be my last time on the show, friends. <laughs> Where do we want to put these? Okay. Well, I mean, that's it for the stuff that. I pulled and went through five facings. All right, well, you want to 
Put them over there. And... Sure. You have more stuff we can pull. It's only like eight o'clock. Early. These are. Well, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you have a gander at those, and I will go look for some other stuff. All right. I'll put them over here. We'll hang out. Yeah. Let's have a good time. Let me take a nap. Hmm. Uh, also, good Avengers. What's that? Uh, Which one? Uh, what's the number? Is that Avengers? Oh, one fifty. Anthony was wondering about the Avengers. Oh, you already told him. I did. It's twenty-two dollars. All right. So we have a few issues over here. Uh, first up, we have. Daredevil 138. Uh, you came here to rescue Karen Page, Daredevil, but you've only succeeded in destroying yourself. There's more tech. Uh, <laughs> we'll see about that, Death's Head. Oh, wait, that's supposed to be Death's Head? Yeah, that's not Ghost Rider right. appears in that issue. Yeah, we also have Ghost Rider. I think this is a different Death's Head because this is not the Marvel UK Death's Head. <laughs> um, Anthony, uh, that is issue 150. Uh, conditioned. Uh, Paul knows the condition of the Avengers book. Avengers 150. How is it? Uh, it's very, very nice. Um, I'd say no lower than a seven. No lower than a seven. Yep. I mean, the spine is impeccable. It's over there. <laughs> Here. <laughs> over there. I only work behind the camera. In great shape. So speaking of, uh, of Avengers issues higher than 149 and lower than 160, you have Avengers 152. Uh, I'm not sure who this character is. Is this supposed to be? No, it's not that. I think that's Brother Voodoo, isn't it? Oh, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. um, so this issue is $10. Uh, looks to be a little more. Not quite in as good shape as the other one. Uh, there's a little bit of surface wear and some yellowing of pages and whatnot, but it's a classic cover with all the Avengers and a lot of skulls. Uh, we all love skulls, don't we? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that one is usually selling for 12 bucks in the shop. We're doing 10 bucks on it tonight. Yes. Brian being very, uh, very good deal, so I hope you appreciate the deals. Um, Next up, we have Captain Marvel 32, featuring the new Captain Marvel. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> the new old Captain Marvel. That one's also got an appearance by Thanos. It's got Drax yes. the Destroyer. We've got Thanos right here. I'll, I'll bring the cover a little closer so folks can see it. Got Thanos right there. Um, this would have been, this was Jim Starlin, wasn't it? Probably. Close to when you have been. Yeah. Um, if you want to kill a character, call Jim Starlin. Yeah, that's that's true now that I think about it. He has done a lot. So this is going to be 12 bucks. Uh, it's a little it's a little beat up, but you know, if it's something you just want to read or you're not too interested in getting it graded, it's a great deal. Um, next up, we have Avengers 171. I picked that one just because it's got the Scarlet Witch. Like, <coughs> kind of losing her mind. Can yeah. Closer. Do. She's got a lot of going around here. Right, so this one's going to be 10 bucks. Uh, we normally sell in the shop for 11 but once again, Brian's cutting y'all a deal. Uh, I really love the, like, crystalline balance of the cover. It's also got Ultron. Uh, I would imagine most people love Ultron. Yeah, except the Avenger and Henry Pym. But isn't Henry Pym an Avenger? No. Anyway. We've got some Silver Age Green Lantern right here. This is Green Lantern number 25. Uh, War of the Weapon Wizards is the title down here in the corner. It's got sonar in the cover. Yeah. Um, this is a really good cover. Uh, I love the very like kinetic nature of Green Lantern's movement. Because you have like the, the movement lines. I, I always love them. 
Uh, yeah, looks like Sonar and uh, Green Lantern have switched their weapon, which is always fun. I love, <laughs> I love when characters have to like use tactics that aren't their normal tactics to win. I think that's one of the best storytelling tropes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have this one for 18 bucks. I really liked it when Emma Frost took over uh, Bobby Drake's body. And like did all kinds of crazy stuff with his powers that he had never thought of. Was this during Cena Grace's Ice Man? Maybe. Okay. Uh, next up, we have number uh, Justice League of America number twenty-eight, um, which is the JLA on strike, which I think is kind of neat. We'll do that. Uh, yeah, this one is really beat up, but um, it's at best a three probably a little bit lower, but yeah, but it's. It's still a great cover, and you know, if it's something you just want for your shelf for to read, it's not a bad pickup. Yeah, it's a reader copy. Definitely. And then it's for twenty bucks, as I said. Honestly, that Ultron thing is it's making me I cannot remember what run it was from, but I think it was like um Ultimates where um, Ultron took over Tony Stark's body and then turned him into like an android who looked like Hope Van Dyne. I do not remember this. Some, something, yeah, it was the Ultimates. Ultimates was super weird. Oh, oh, it was Ultimates, yeah. Ultimates, I think it was. I can't remember. Uh, lastly, for this uh, rack over here, we have Marvel Presents Guardians of the Galaxy number three. Uh, so this is not the team a lot of people are familiar with. This is the, the older team where you have Starhawk and Ast or Vance Astro and and Yondu, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of cool. And these are the characters that were referenced in the at the end of the yes, second yes. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, and those are the guys that are like in the year 3000, right? Yep. Yeah. And I believe some of them are returning for the third movie, supposedly. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and this this was Sylvester Stallone. Uh, <laughs> really? They had him as he was Starhawk. I think so. I don't. I don't recall who his character name was. I believe. I well, he was in the movie, right? He was in the okay. Movie. Then he was Starhawk. Um. Yeah, he's the one who kicked uh, Yondu out, basically, yeah. of their of the Ravagers. Of the Ravagers. Which is always funny to me that that was there, because when I think of the Ravagers, I think of DC. Hmm. All right, we've got some, uh, I found the one that everyone's been looking for, Darkhawk number one, uh, 15 bucks. It is in excellent condition. Uh, you're not going to find it, a, a copy this quality for anything cheaper. Like, this is a great copy of a book that everybody wants. I really all of a sudden want it. Yeah, well, I, I think he's getting a relaunch. I also, wasn't there also a rumor that he's going to be in the Yes, the yeah. Henry is going to be in the Moon Knight series. But there is a new Dark Hawk series coming up, which I think they do one every, like, 12 years or so. Uh, I think it's a little less than that, but yeah. Whenever there's cicadas. <laughs> <laughs> that would be eight years. All right. uh, and then we've got some Thor back-to-back -back issues. What is it? 383 and 384. Is it, so is this during or right after Simonson? You're supposed to know that. I'm reading it. I haven't finished it yet. Oh, uh, that's the, uh, isn't that the Thor from the future or something? Yeah. That's on the right there. On the outer right. Yeah, the once in the future yes. Thor. Yeah. So this one is probably after Simonson then. I think the whole must be then. Yeah, he had a fun name. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't it was called. Then we've got, uh, speaking of Nomad, Nomad number one. A man without a country. I was saving this for the Falcon and Winter Soldier show coming up, but that works. Yeah, I, I think Nomad is a really cool idea. Um, I'm kind of sad that it didn't work out as well as they had hoped, because I, I do really like the idea of what happens when Steve Rogers, the person who single, like most believes in the idea of America as a concept, doesn't anymore. Um, and I'm really sad that fans didn't pay to it, because from my understanding, that was the reason it didn't last for very long. Uh, yeah, well, nobody's reading the Nomad series or the, the original Nomad. 
Was this not the origin? It is. Oh. But, so the story of Nomad is that that was like that happened during the Captain America series. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, well, he, he had a he had a Nomad. But he left Nixon. Like, I yeah. see. Yeah. And then he gave up the Nomad costume, and this is the Bucky Barnes from the fifties. Gotcha. Who took the Super Soldier serum oh, out the Vader rays? Okay. So he went crazy. He and the Captain America from that time went crazy. Yeah, that's the one who becomes the great director. Yeah, and then this is then Bucky Barnes like get recovers his sanity, and Cap is like, well, I'm not using this name anymore. <laughs> He's like Jack something. Not now I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. And Ed Brubaker killed him in his first issue writing Captain America. Yeah. It was a, it was an alright character. Well, we've got issue number one. Yeah. Uh, next to that we've got more Black Knight. Black Knight number one. Which when was this one from? The eighties? Uh nineties. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like I said, love me some Black Knight. Um, I think this is was this before or after he was an Avenger? After he was kicked out? That sounds right. Would have been because he was an Avenger in the eighties. Okay. Uh, that Thor's name is um, Dargo Kator. That's yeah, that's Dargo Kator. Kator. Thor of the future. Dargo Kator. We talked about it in like yeah. our second show. Yes. Yeah, it was one I was on. Yeah. It was one of my, it was like my first show. I was like, you've been out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that I've been doing this for a bit. I'm um, getting good at it. Thank you. Maybe one day we'll pay you. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Now, Real everybody's, nice everybody's favorite issue Heroes Against Hunger. Everybody loves it. I'm not familiar with this one. Is this fun? When would this have been? This is 86. Okay. I mean, it is 86. Superman totally could solve World Hunger. <laughs> he really could. Yeah, he could probably do all the farm labor needed to feed the entire world in like a day. Mm -hmm. That was one of the uh, Straczynski series, Rising Stars. Like, they did that. Like, he was like, here we go. We fixed the soil. So the soil is fertile again. And it's like, why didn't Superman ever do that? Yep. I feel like it's because, and it's hard with superheroes, but people just haven't thought to do that. Because there, there's some interesting like ideas of what superheroes can do and what they should do. So, you know who's probably would have thought of that? UNICEF. Would be like, hey, yeah. <laughs> while you're flying around in that red underwear, can you please? <laughs> Well, uh, Superman, you know, he knows that he could fix a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. yes. He doesn't do it because he wants humans to figure it out themselves right. while they're not, like, falling out of the building. Well, I think, you know what I mean? I like, think yeah. it's because he doesn't want them to be dependent on him. Yeah. Which which is complicated, right? Like, at what point are you helping people, and at what point are you stopping them from being able to fix problems in the future? Because it, it's something you see a lot in sci-fi, where, like, once people forget, or once technology gets to a certain point, if society collapses. We've all seen Wally. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Uh, next to the starving children, <laughs> there is Daredevil. Always. With the you can't owl. see the issue. Issue number 145, featuring the owl. <laughs> Deadly we... is the owl by night. We did talk about it. Okay. That's what I thought. Talking about what? Dargo? No, that one. Oh. Yeah. yeah so you've seen some of these before. Uh, so down like... here, we've got The Last Avenger Story, parts one and two, for 10 bucks. So who's the, uh, who is this by? It doesn't say. Oh, fun. It's uh, nobody's written it <laughs> because it's the last of your story and it hasn't happened yet. They didn't want to put their names to it, and that's happened before. I this mean. is the uh, logo I'm not overly familiar with the Marvel Alternatives. I know which one it is. And I'm trying to copy the multiverse it's written by Peter David. Oh, that makes sense. Illustrated by Ariel Olivetti. Oh, huh. Peter David. Devin says that we need an owl versus demolition man story. Oh, I'd be here for that. 
<laughs> I'm here for all the like weird. I'm, I'm here for all the weird nonsensical stories that people want. Like uh, the comics are at their best when they're bizarre and make no sense. So I'm here for the weirdness. All right, on the other side of Dracula, we've got another daredevil. Three the meters of Electra. Uh, this is going to be 190. Uh, we have featured this one before, um, but it's back. Wasn't this Miller's last issue? Or uh, last one uh, drawing? Uh, I don't recall. It is Miller related. Yeah, he did a cover. I knew this was, I know this is a significant one in terms of him, not just in terms of the story, but I can't remember how so. Let's see. Yeah, I need to read all of the. Miller era Daredevil. Yeah, I've only read The Man Without Fear, which I think is a great mini series, but uh, I haven't really. If only they sold compiled books with all of the issues inside of them. This is true. If only. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one we've got over there is Doctor Strange. Uh, I believe that's a 50th issue. Would you double check on that? Yep. And we hold it up and so everyone can see all the shiny. Yeah, this is number 50. That is very shiny. Shiny, shiny. I think there's a whole bunch of guest stars in that too. Yes, we've got. Uh, doesn't actually say. Doesn't it? But it said right on the. Oh side yes, there. it does. Sorry, Ghost Rider, Hulk, and Silver Surfer, uh, aka members of the Defenders. So that is the second to the last Frank issue Miller. of Frank Miller. Okay. He did 191, and then. Um, Years later, he did a, another like a single issue here and there, but that's that's pretty much the end of the story arc. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there anything you guys would like to see? Get another look at. <laughs> I play with Godzilla. Um, there are a couple good new trades out this week. There's the Marvies up Marvy. Marvel <laughs> Zombies Resurrection. Uh, that's the recent Zombies miniseries. And then there is the Complete Scarlet Witch, which encompasses issues 1 through 15 of the 1915... 1915... 2015 Scarlet Witch series. <laughs> the, uh, the Mar amazing cover. Like, yes. The, the, the Marvel Zombies... Um, Resurrection trade notably is written by uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson, who is taking over Superman. From Brian McAvoy. Yes. Uh, and we did get a couple. I mean, I think they're cool. They are. Yeah, the Witcher action figures from McFarland Toys. McFarland does amazing toys. When they move. They used to just be like statues. They do this. I hated the sports ones. Yeah. Yeah, because those like were they were nothing but like a fancier version of like the starting line mm -hmm. sports toys that were just statues. We should tell everybody that we're on the comic book shopping network. I have a link to our show. You can post that. Yes, uh, Saturday mornings at eleven o'clock, we are on the comic book shopping network. Which is a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. and you can also get them from comicbookshoppingnetwork.com. And, and check out their other shows, but mostly check out ours. Yeah, uh, and one notable difference that you'll find between our Saturday show and our Wednesday show is that on a Saturday show, we do not do current issues. It is all back issues all the time. And uh, given the crowd that tends to frequent that, we're probably going to be focusing on some some higher price back mm -hmm. issues more so. So if you're interested in some of our high end stuff, I highly recommend checking out our Saturday show. Yeah, we'll be definitely doing more of like forty, fifty, sixty dollar, or maybe even higher books, depending on what the crowd wants. We do what the crowd wants. Yes, mm -hmm. we are servants of the people. Hey, Judge Dredd. <laughs> I'm going to do wide so we can see everything up. All right. Easy. Anybody watch Resident Alien yet? No. Mm -hmm. I just finished the book. Um, I've been busy reading Thor. 
Anthony would like to see nothing but X Men back issues. Nothing. Just X Men, or does that in include X Force or New Mutants? You want just X titles, just all mutants? X titles, Anthony, or are we talking? I've got the whole run of Mutant X. <laughs> the TV series. <laughs> I do. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just like the timing of it. <laughs> the, the, the timing of when you said that, it sounded like it was... Like... <laughs> he said, oh, God, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. I mean, you're speaking my language, Anthony. I love X-Men. Um, sometimes to the detriment of my relationships with the people around me. Uh, I love X-Men. Uh, you know, I always get excited when Paul is like pulling issues for the show and he pulls out X-Men issues. I have to be careful not to be like, I want them, because then if they don't sell, I'm often on the hook. Because <laughs> I was on the hook if between this week and Saturday, we didn't sell the X-Men number ones. I was going to buy those, but thankfully, someone prevented me. <laughs> okay, we got all these Shadow of the Bats. Yeah, we got all this good stuff. Nice Issues 16, 16 through 23. 23. We can do a deal. We're doing deals on this stuff too. You guys can throw out some numbers. Um, all that can happen is, is we say no. We're always open to uh, an offer. Hmm. Anthony wants some old McFarland Spideys or solid Avenger back issues. We got some cool McFarland Spideys. Yeah. This Ghost Rider uh, guest star series as a. To McFarland issues. Mm -hmm. One thing that always, like, if I was a, an artist, I would not want to draw that much detail into a spider web. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I just, I could never, like, that would be like days. He wants earlier days. stuff. All right. <laughs> and this is his second story arc, I think, because he did Torment and then right into this. Mm -hmm. We might have some reprint of the number one torment somewhere. We will see what we have. We will keep digging. Digging through our boxes. Yeah, we are currently organizing everything. <laughs> and Anthony is, is believes that Tommy Farland drank heavily <laughs> in order to get through the spider webs. I'm sure a lot of artists did. That would explain Rob Liefeld. <laughs> did you know that Rob Liefeld was in a uh, Blue Jeans commercial? Yes. That's uh, funny. I have it right here. Oh my god. <laughs> Why do you have This it? show is going to be us just staring at a screen off screen and reacting to it. <laughs> Isn't that what all like webcasts are? Mm -hmm. Some of them. When we get really fancy, then we'll be like, you know, have that video ready to go. Um, okay. Anything else? Do you want to do some fan casting? You got two characters? I have posted the link <laughs> to the Levi's 501 button fly jeans commercial. That's funny because I, I can remember that commercial before I knew who he was. Yeah. That's, that's what the 90s, but that's why uh, Claremont quit is because the, the artists were like superstars in the 90s. And I mean, who puts, you know, Stan Lee was never even on the jeans commercial. Yeah. So, also, and, like, uh, Bob Harris in particular, who was the editor of the X-Books, was just, like, giving artists pretty much complete control of books, and it was especially hard because Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee are not well-known for their ability to meet a deadline, uh, which, you know, from my understanding, Claremont wasn't even particularly angry that he didn't have as much creative control, so much as the fact that he had basically no time to write the, the dialogue for each issue it just wasn't humanly possible like even john byrne who they tapped after him to do it just couldn't because mm -hmm. jim lee would turn in a page and at a point that would give him like a day to write the dialogue yeah which worked fine uh, in the past but uh, yeah. not in the 90s, not in the 90s. Alright, y'all. Um, last chance if you want to see anything. If anybody wants any of this stuff, you can hit us up after the show. Um, otherwise, you may see some of it on Saturday. Some of it will 
probably show up on Saturday. Um, the stuff that we didn't already show on Saturday. Yes. Did anybody get the Avengers 150? Or is that still there? I believe it's still there. Still there, Dalton. Do you want it? I figured how close I can get. <laughs> Or would you prefer The Last Avengers? I actually want to do that now. I think I remember that when that came out, and I wasn't that excited about the art, but now that I know Peter David wrote it. Well, I think it's it's got one of those plastic covers on it. Yeah. Uh -huh. like Marvel did. Yeah. I do not like the plastic covers. Yeah, they always got really yeah. Scott. Yeah, Dalton so. would like that. Okay. Which is a good choice, Dalton. Thanks, Dalton. Yeah, I mean, that's fun and everything. That wasn't, you know, the best 90s gimmick, gimmick was the, the folding thing. Like yeah, whatever. All right. Last chance for Dazzler number one. <laughs> Written by Garth Ennis. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would... Truthfully, probably sell all my comics about happened. This is a really good writer. He's yes. good at writing what he writes. You, you know, there are there are see him subvert Dazzler. Yeah, all of her um, superpowers are actually just like a heroin overdose or something. I can see it. Yeah, like in an alley or something. She thinks she's having this it's amazing adventure. Yeah, she's by a dumpster. Nope, not 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 what I want. No. All of the bright shiny lights is the ambulance and the police. Definitely. And Titty Pride is not a superhero, but it's like. Her. Okay, now they're just doing this to make me mad. <laughs> it's like a streetwalker. I'm just gonna go over here. <laughs> That's what Jared Dennis would do. That's not what we want to do. Yeah, but I'm sure you specifically said Kitty Pride because she's my favorite comic yeah. character. Oh, Lockheed is, Lockheed is, is totally it. just imaginary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, no, it's like just straight cat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean the the original Lockheed, which showed up in like I think it was X Men One Fifty Three, was like not as good as the Darth Ennis one. A, a like fictional, a dragon. fictional version of the Blackbird, like but as a dragon. I think it didn't it come from when they went to the the land where Kurt. Yeah, and Nightcrawler is like it's like it's, it's all from his dimension. Dimension. All the time. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's a it's a fairy tale that Kitty's mm -hmm. telling Eliana, and then he reused the idea for Lockheed later on for the actual Lockheed. Uh, Devin's saying that Amy Reader should write in John Dazzler. Yes, that would be so good. <clears throat> I don't know who that is. She uh, did uh, she did the writing or some of the writing for Moon Girl and Double Dinosaur. Okay, that's fun. Who did the the latest four covers that were so pretty? Oh, I forget his name. I forget his name. It wasn't Javier Garon, was it? I don't know. He had such a great use of color. Yeah. Very vivid color, very rainbowy. Love it. I'm excited for the new Beta Ray Bill series. Wait, what? I bet Jamie's excited. <laughs> Wait, what? Nobody, <laughs> to nobody told me there was a Beta Ray Bill series. Uh, it's written and drawn by. Now I forget his name. The guy who did the Wonder Woman Dead Earth. I, I know who it is, but I cannot remember his name. Yeah, it's like a three name. Did, did Thor come out this week or no? Or was that last week? Thor was it was not this week. week. No. I thought it was like a big split, like a big origin change. That was in Avengers. Avengers. That was in Avengers. Yes. Yeah. They changed his origin again in Avengers. Yeah. Well, just modified it. Presumably to tie into the fact that his, his dad had a big crush on the Phoenix Force. <laughs> <laughs> Rose's that did come out. That was. Yeah. Nobody. Uh, but I don't read Avengers. I think Phoenix is very overrated. It's only the, the Dark Phoenix or the Phoenix destructive Force. force of the universe. Yeah. Made. So I I don't agree with you, but I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I agree with Rose that they overuse the Phoenix yes, Force. Yes, that I agree with. Way yeah. too much. Yeah. I, I still think Rachel Summers should be Phoenix, but. Or Rachel Gray, I guess she's going by now. Yeah. Or oh, so you care about her choice in names, but not Kate's choice in names. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do I need to just like quit? Is that is that, is that what you guys are trying to tell me? Do you need to be consistent? Yeah. Okay. No problem. One. 
Maniac of New York. Yeah, he got one. Oh, he got one, Devin. Yeah, we did talk about it. He subscribed to it. You're subscribed to it, Devin. You got it, and it's awesome. It does sound cool. It's good. It'd be a good movie. Yeah. Did Did Scott Summers marry Madeline Pry? Pryor. Yeah. 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 Married Pryor. No. Because Cable is uh, Scott and Mad yeah. Madeline's kid, not Scott and Jean's. Is he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Yes. yes. There was a whole thing about how in Inferno she kidnaps him, who would later become Cable, uh, to try to like sacrifice him to get back at Scott. Because yeah. comics. Yeah. Inferno is a great story, but it's also got some really weird stuff going on. Who's your mom? Oh, the Goblin Queen. <laughs> 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 and my dad Cyclops. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, well, Rachel, to... Rachel Summers is also their kid, but from a different timeline. Right? So, so yeah, she. she... Oh. No, no. So Rachel is Jean. Madeline is. The there's daughter. a reason I didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. in the nineties. So there's there's two conflicting things about about Rachel. So Rachel is either depending on if you ask Chris Claremont or Marvel editorial. She's either uh, Scott and Jean's kid or Jean and the Phoenix Force's kid. <laughs> That's Chris Claremont's opinion. Um, Anthony says that Inferno is awesome. Yeah. And have the best outfits. It's definitely pretty awesome. Uh, the outfits, I, I think it depends on the character. Like, Captain Britain uh, gets this outfit in it that's, like, really wild in the Excalibur part. She is the daughter of alternate future counterparts. Cyclops and Jean Grey. Yep. And she is the sister of Nate Grey, half sister of Cable, because Nate Grey was obviously X Man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it got yes. pretty co complicated. Yeah. That's what Jim Shooter left, I bet, because there was right. no continuity. No continuity, yeah. Because it all disappeared. Yeah, that's um, being the kid who had to read his friend's comics, like, I ever, he'd bring home, like, X Men books and be like, what is going on? This is not what was happening two weeks ago. Yeah. This was this was also when uh, Apocalypse almost became the third Summers brother. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> the, not, the, not worse than what did happen. Uh, the other almost Summers brother is Adam X the Extreme. Yes. <laughs> and Gambit, actually. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everybody, proof of the X Men are exhausting. <laughs> this is true. I love the X Men, but they're so tiring. There's a reason I listen to a continuity X Men continuity podcast because I need that X Men. Because you're trying to go crazy. <laughs> no, that's, that's... All right. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, join us again Saturday morning at eleven o'clock. You can join us here or on the Comic Book Shopping Network. Uh, and then if you don't join us then, we'll see you next Wednesday. Yep. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for your purchases. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Good night. Bye. Thank you for, uh, for joining us, and we'll see you Saturday.